here we're given the function f of x equals the greatest integer of the quantity two minus x, and we're asked to determine the following three limits. We have two one-sided limits and one regular limit. So the first thing to recognize here is that capital INT does stand for the greatest integer or the floor function. This function can also be expressed several other ways using brackets. One common way would be f of x equals, and we use vertical bars that move inward at the bottom. So this also means the greatest integer of the quantity two minus x. And it's often also expressed using these brackets here. So the first step is to recognize what kind of function we have. And now we'll find our limits graphically and numerically. And we'll be using the graphing calculator to help us. So for the first step, we'll enter the function. So we'll press y equals. And now we'll press math, right arrow once to number. And then option five for the greatest integer function. So five. And then we have two minus x, close parenthesis. And now if we press zoom six, this would graph the function with the standard window from negative 10 to positive 10 along the x and y axes. But notice how if we want to sketch this, our axes go from negative five to five. So let's go ahead and change the window. So we'll press window and we'll change the min and max values to negative five and five. And now we'll graph it again. Notice how our function is discontinuous and it's made up of these segments. But what this graph doesn't show is that one endpoint is a closed point and one endpoint is an open point. To determine this, let's go ahead and check some of the values of the function. So I'm going to press second trace for calculation, option one for value. Let's check the value when x is zero. So I'll press the zero, enter. So this is showing us that the point zero two is on this piece, not on the lower piece. So this piece has a closed point at zero two. Let's go ahead and plot that point. So zero two would be here, and this piece went to the left to what appeared to be negative one. Going back to the calculator, Let's check the value at x equals negative one. So we'll press second trace for calculation, option one for value, and now we'll enter a negative one for x. And notice how the y value or function value is up at positive three, not at positive two, which means this piece here would have an open point on the left side. So looking at this piece here, we have an open point here and the function value is here when x equals negative one. This is all we really need in order to make a nice graph. We can just follow the pattern that we saw on the calculator. Notice as we move to the right, each piece is one unit lower. So let's go ahead and first sketch the pieces. Look like this. And now for every piece, the left end point would be open, the right end point would be closed. So open, closed, open, closed, open, closed, and so on. And now let's take a look at our limits. Our first limit is the limit as x approaches three from the right or from the positive side of our function. So notice here's where x equals three. So if we're approaching three from the positive side of the right side, we'd be approaching positive three from this direction here. Notice as we approach from this direction, the y values are approaching negative two. They actually equal negative two as we approach x equals three from the right, which means our limit is equal to negative two. So this limit is approaching three from the right. Now for the second limit, we're approaching three from the left at the negative side. So if we're approaching this orange vertical line from the left, the negative side, we're now approaching from this direction. 
and notice how the y values are approaching negative one. They're actually not approaching negative one, they are negative one as we approach x equals three from the left. So our limit is equal to negative one. And now for the last limit, we have the limit as x approaches three of f of x. In order for this limit to exist, the limit from the left and the right must be the same. And we can tell from the two previous one set of limits, they're not the same. And therefore, the limit as x approaches three of f of x does not exist. Now let's also take a look at these limits using the table feature on the graphing calculator so we can look at these limits numerically. To do this, we first want to make sure that the table feature is on ask, not automatic. So we'll press second, window, and make sure ask is highlighted here, which it is. So now we'll press second graph for the table. And if we want to approach three from the positive side, we want to approach three from values that are larger than three. So for example, we could start at three point, let's say 3.3, .3, and maybe 3.2, maybe 3.1. So again, we're approaching three from values that are larger than three. And notice how the y values are all negative two. 3.05, 3.01. And notice how again, the limit is asking what the values are approaching. The function values or y values are not only approaching negative two, they are equal to negative two. So that verifies this first limit. Now we want to approach three from the left of the negative side, meaning approach three from values that are smaller than three. So let's go back up here and now we'll enter, let's say 2.7, maybe 2.8, 2.9. So we're approaching three from values that are less than three, 2.95. You can see here that the function values or y values, again, are not only approaching negative one, they're equal to negative one, verifying our limit from the left. And again, because these limits are different, the limit as x approaches three does not exist. I hope you found this helpful.